Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. My name is Anna, I am a macrame artist and teacher and today I'm bringing you a new tutorial for a large boho wall hanging. Now I know from the views and all of your comments that these large wall hangings are really your favorites so I do hope you will enjoy this tutorial just as much as you did all the others. And that's it for the quick introduction. Now, as always, let's go through our list of supplies and tools. Since this is a wall hanging, we of course will need some sort of a dowel or a branch. I will be using this one from a birch tree. It measures 150 centimeters, and I'm using the birch tree because a friend of mine who commissioned this whole piece asked specifically for that. Now, other than trimming this to the right length, I didn't do anything to the branch because obviously we want the birch tree because of the bark. So if I remove the bark, then there would be no point of using this type of wood. So all of the bark is still on, including all these like little pieces where there were little branches before. I would just say make sure that there is no like big branches that would be sticking out. I would cut those off, but there weren't any on this one, so I had a pretty easy job. As for the cords, I'm planning to use the very basic 5mm braided cords in the color natural. And I will see because just like with many other pieces, I initially have a plan which later on changes. So it might happen that I will be adding some other cords throughout the process as well, which of course I will let you know throughout the tutorial. But there is one other supply that I'm planning to use other than the macrame cords, and that is this leather. Now, if you want to know why I've chosen specifically this leather, I would suggest that you consider checking out my Patreon because in my latest Patreon vlog, I am talking you through in detail why I've chosen this particular um, leather to work with. And in the future, I want to share a lot more of these little details that don't fit into YouTube videos. So link to my Patreon down below. When it comes to all the measurements and lengths for both the macrame cords and the leather cords, you can find all of that down below in the description of the video. And as for the tools needed for this, with again, the current plan in mind, I only need some scissors and a measuring tape and my clothing rack to hold the branch. Okay, so in general, the idea for this piece is I want to have a lot of layers that will be overlapping. And I don't know exactly what all of them will look like, but I do know the beginning. The very middle layer, I have a very precise picture of what I want that to look like. So that's where I'm going to start by cutting all of the both macrame cords and the leather cords that I will need for that section. I'll put them up on the branch here and then I'll get back to you to explain what I'm doing with them. I've put up all of the cords. I did six of the leather cords 
and eight of the braided cords so far. I was using the Lark's head knot and maybe you could also see that I was being very careful when putting it on to not disturb the bark too much. And also the leather feels a little bit more fragile um, somehow. So I was being very careful when putting all of them up. Now for the pattern here, it will be a very simple kind of arrow shaped pattern using the square knots. So I'll be making the square knots across the entire first row. And then in each next row, I will be removing two cords on the side to then create that arrow shape. And I'm hoping that that will create a very interesting effect where some knots will be just the braided or just the leather, and then some knots will be mixed the two together. So let's see what that will look like. So to make the basic square knot, I'm taking the first four cords, the left cord goes over the two in the middle, right cord over this one, then wraps behind the two cords and out through this loop. And then I tighten this first half, but not too much, and then make a second half, the right cord goes over the two in the middle, left cord over it, behind them, and out this loop and tighten again, again, not too much. We still have a little bit of space right here. And then I can do hopefully the same thing with the leather cords. That will be a little bit more tricky because the leather is definitely less flexible than the cords, macrame cords, but it's still workable. So I'm making sure that it doesn't get two twisted and then making the second half of that square knot like that and tighten. Okay, I think that looks okay. So now I'll continue for the rest of that row. And then whenever I get to this part, I will again, take away these two cords. They're not gonna make any knots anymore. And then from these two, I'll again make that same knot, except I am mixing the two different chord types. And I want to leave a little bit of a gap in between here, maybe like this much. It's also because the leather is not that flexible, so I can't tighten it as much as I can tighten the regular macrame cords. So like that, I'll keep going for all of the rows, always removing the next two cords on the side to make the next row. So I finished this first triangle. Now I'm thinking that maybe later I want to add more layers to it just to make it a little bit longer. But first I want to add some of the other sections first to see how it all looks together. So for that next section, we are going to be doing a spiral knot, just going like this into the middle. So I'll add two cords here for that and show you how to make that knot. The two cords are up. Now with the spiral knot, there is a big potential to save a lot of cord because essentially the spiral knot is a square knot where you just keep repeating one side of the square knot. So that means only these two cords on the outer sides are making the knot while the two cords in the middle, they're just hanging down the entire time. They're not making any knots, meaning they're not getting shorter. They're staying exactly the same length as they are now. So to save the cord, what you want to do with the spiral knot is when you're hanging the cord, you don't want it to hang it in the middle of that cord. 
you want to make the outer cords a lot shorter than, or sorry, the inner cords a lot shorter than your outer cords. So for me, these inner cords, I made them about a meter long. So from here to the end of the cord, it's about one meter. That's, I'm estimating that's how long the entire section will be. And then the rest of the cord is on the outside. So I hope that that's a good tip that can save you some money. And now let's do the spiral knot. So as said, the spiral knot is just a half of a square knot. So I'm starting on the left side, the kind of outer, outer side, if you consider this to be the middle. So on the outer side, so I make one half and then again, I'm taking the left cord first and putting that on. And already, as soon as I will finish the second part, you can see the twist. You can see the spiral happening here. So I will continue like this, always taking the left cord. And once it gets turned all the way around, maybe here I can add one more on this end, on this side. But once you can see that it has really made that turn, you will just help it a little bit to turn. And then again, take the cord that's on the left and keep doing that same knot. And so I will keep doing this until I reach the desired length. I am done with the spiral knots on both sides. You can see that on both sides, the spiral knots are twisting inwards. That's because I was always start starting with the outer cord. So on this end, when I was showing you, I was always using the left cord first. On this end, it was the right cord that went in first and that started the square knot, half of the square knot. Now down here, I have just put on some uh, like hair bend, hair accessory to tie them together just to get an idea of where they meet, how it looks. Later, when I have most of all the other later layers, I will actually do a gathering knot down here to tie them together. But that's like a more permanent thing and I always only want to do that once more or less everything else is done. So now I'll move on to the next layer, which again will be a type of a braid, let's say, and again using the spiral knots. But first I'll put up two cords of that leather that I was using before, and this time they will just hang um, equally, like they're not like here, they will be the same length, you know, all of the ends. Okay, so the leather cords are up. Now I'm taking another piece of the natural cord. I find the middle. I put the middle behind the two leather cords and then I make a square knot. So the left side goes, well actually, you know, let's start on the right side. Right side goes over the two cords in the middle, left side over that, behind them and out the loop. Just like if you were creating a regular square knot and then when you tighten, you have to be careful to make sure you tighten that at the top of all those cords. And then you do the other side. So we started on the right, so now we start on the left. And we've got our first square knot. Again, make sure it's at the top there. And then we will continue with all the other square knots. So again, the leather cords in the middle, they're just hanging there, not doing any knots. And it's the natural cord that's going around them that's getting shorter and makes all the knots. I'm thinking back on all those times When I feel close to from All that I could become Eager but to scared of crime Wanted to please my friends, but it felt like the end of myself. I was shut down and I drained out. I was lost, so I had to change. 
So I finished both sides of the Solomon bar. Again, down here, I've just put it together with some hairpins. Now, these ends of the braided cords, once I'm completely done, I will actually use a hot glue gun to clean these up. So no need to worry about those now. And as you can see, I've also done one half of the next section. So that will be just a simple zigzag from the double half hitch knots. And I'll show you on the other side how I'm going to do that. And I can already see when I take this part and pull it to the middle where it's going to connect to the other side that both this and this section will have to be shorter. So it's a good thing that I'm using just these temporary solutions to hold them together because now I can just redo them as I need to. But first, I'm going to show you the other side, connect the two in the middle, and then I'll shorten these two parts. So I started by putting up four cords, all hanging at equal lengths. Now I'm going to take the leftmost cord that's going to become the travel cord, which will be inside all of the zigzags. And then we start with the next cord over, making the double half hitch knot. So first the cord goes over the travel cord, tighten it, and then once more, make a loop over and out through that loop and tighten. And notice that I'm holding the travel cord in, I guess, more or less a 45 degree angle the whole time in my right hand, just stretched in that direction where I want all of the zigzag rows to go. And now I'm just adding all of the other cords in the exact same way. So always just making the loops. And because these cords are pretty long, I'm now going to use my fast method for putting on the double half hitch, or it's not my method, but I use it all the time. And you will see a link to a video where I explain it up there. And when I'm done with this direction, all of the cords are on, I'll go in the opposite direction. So again, holding the travel cord in that same angle so that it creates this nice triangle right here. I finished this side as well. Now these zigzags or whenever you're doing the double half hitch in this pattern, it looks simple, but it is really difficult to make it look good to make it symmetrical because I think at least in my case, I don't know, maybe I'm just different, but it is very easy for me to go off track with the angles. You can see it on here that at the top, the angles are a little bit wider than here at the bottom. This first one, I did a much better job there. Like all of the angles are very similar. Now what I was doing when I was doing the second one is, and the first one actually as well, I had my measuring tape and I would measure how much space is right here at the longest section. And I try to make it the same, but yeah, I, I went off on this one. Again, I don't know how that happens to me, but it happens all the time. Now, when I'm going to be connecting them or why you want them to be the same length, the same size, is when you connect them down here in the middle, you want to make sure that this middle point is underneath in the same line with this middle point of that triangular square knot section that you have at the top. And for that to happen, both of these have to be the same length. So that's the goal. That's what I'm always trying to do, rarely succeeding. <laughs> so I hope you will be better at this. Um, and let me now just quickly show you how I'm going to connect them. So I pull them together like this. Then I need to pick one of these sides and I'm picking this one because here, it, it is a little bit shorter, so I'm picking this cord to be my travel cord, and then this one is going to add one more double half hitch on this one. And it is a little bit tricky because you have to keep holding it tight to actually pull it together properly. Ok, 
Okay, so like that, we've got this done. And now I'll add just two more rows of a few more double half hitches, always taking the third chord from the outside. And then again, in that row underneath, I'll leave two chords B and then add a few more double half hitch knots. I haven't even finished connecting them together fully and I have decided that I have to redo this part. You can see up here especially how it's really like bulging out and it's just kind of twisting like this a little bit. I just, I don't like it. This is for a good friend of mine and I really want to give her some really good quality work. So I'm going to redo the side, but then finish the connecting the same way I was just showing you. So I moved forward quite a bit. I fixed this part. I made both of these sections a little bit shorter. I think I'll still have to adjust them a little bit once it gets to the big finale. And I have done one of the side sections. It took me quite a while to figure out what do I want to do there, but I think I'm happy with it here. It's really the same things, the same patterns that I was using here. At the top, I've done three, four, five of the square knots in this triangle shape, so a little bit smaller. Then I've done the spiral knot, and then I did the Solomon bar, all using only the natural chords. I wish I had more of the leather. If I did, I would incorporate the, incorporated it there somewhere, but unfortunately I don't, so all of this is natural. And now I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side and just show you little bits of that. But I don't think any particular explanation is needed because like I said, same patterns as right here. And then what will follow next is adding fringe to this part. So everywhere on all these outer cords, these longest ones, I'm going to be adding pieces of the natural cord across the whole section. So on all these four, four parts here. When I'm done adding the fringe, I'll make some of these uh, parts final, actually you know, connect them properly and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. getting very close to the finish line here. All the macrame is done, the fringe is on. What I've also done is I've cleaned up the Solomon bars after checking like a billion times that they're really well aligned, that's all in, that all is in the right place. So what I did in the Solomon bars is I cut really short the two cords that were making the knots, the two cords that were hanging on the side, 
And then I just took my glue gun and I glued um, the cords to the back of the Solomon bar. So now it will be off to doing all the gathering knots that are going to connect all of these sections permanently. And I'm really glad that I actually figured out a way to incorporate the little bits of the leather that I still have because I am going to use those on two of the Solomon bars, one on, no, actually not the Solomon bars, the spiral knots. I'm going to do the gathering knot with the leather for these. So I'll show you how to do the gathering knot with the leather, but it's the same as for the natural cords, which is what I'm going to be using for all the other sections. And once I'm done with the gathering knots, I will finish the trim on all the sections. And then that is it. So for that gathering knot, let's first take this off. And now I am going to take the piece of leather. I will put it right next to, so I'm keeping all the cords in this bundle, to the back of it, I will add that leather cord. Down here, I'm going to make a little loop out of it. It doesn't have to be too long. And then hold that up, hold the loop in one of my hands. And with the other, I'll start wrapping this leather cord around all of the other cords. And I've done five wraps and I think that looks good. So now I will move to that back, see where that loop is, take that cord through that loop like that, hold it with my other hand. And then at the top here, I will pull the initial cord that we left at the top there all the way so that this really gets squeezed underneath all those wraps. And once I'm sure that it's squeezed really tight, I can take my scissors and I can cut off both the top here and that bottom cord that's sticking out as well. And voila. Jump into the car on a Friday night. I want to drive with you. Looking for a bar in the nearest town. I've never seen a sky so blue. We don't have a plan and the night is young. It doesn't matter what we do. There ain't nobody like. There ain't nobody like. You look so beautiful. So lucky to be yours I am done and I love the way this turned out. Now, just crossing my fingers that my friend will like it too. If you enjoyed the tutorial, give this video a like, comment down below. Both of those things really help my channel to grow, so I would definitely appreciate your support there. And if you do want to support even more, you can always check out my Patreon, where for a monthly subscription, you get loads of other benefits. Link down below. And that is it for me today. I will look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.